From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. For everyone out there that disagrees, change the channel. You're not worth it. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk book. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. In this segment of the program, I want to talk a little bit about (laughs) a phone call we received. We were talking about the movie Knocked Up. A movie that uh, does not get the TL stamp of approval, I can tell you right now. It doesn't. I wanted to love this movie, but I don't. For any number of reasons that I've discussed on the air. And uh, many of you have probably seen this film because it's one of the top films in America. We received a phone call from somebody who was commenting on the main character in the movie Knocked Up. whose name was Ben, and uh, complimented him for manning up. That was the phrase, manning up. And uh, how did he man up? Well, when he found out that this chick he had a one-night stand with was pregnant, after an initial shock and negative reaction, he ultimately offered to be there for this woman, up to it, including being in the delivery room, he even proposed to her. And the caller, a female, said that uh, she liked the fact that he manned up. Now, I do not consider this manning up. If I ever impregnate somebody, my reaction would be the following. Number one... I don't know why you let that happen, because I told you, didn't want to be a parent, I used a condom, and uh, you, you're you going to do this, are you? Well, my reaction would be, if she, if she absolutely refused, you know, if the Hail Mary didn't work, if any of the other techniques and tactics that I recommend didn't work, ultimately I would simply take out my checkbook and I'd say, okay, how much do I owe you? And I would pay what I owe. I would pay what I am legally required to pay, and then I would have nothing to do with the situation anymore. I'm not going to be your Lamaze partner. I'm not going to take you to the gynecological visits every few weeks. I, I'm not getting involved, because I'm, I'm completely honest, open, and fair about this right from the beginning. I tell you from the beginning, I don't want to be a parent. And there are many, many, many reasons I have said over the years that I didn't want to be a parent, not the least of which is that uh, I don't want the inconvenience of it all. I don't want to be going to the doctor with you all the time. I don't want to be going to Lamaze classes. I do not want to be going out and choosing nursery furniture. I just simply don't want to do it. I have no interest. And if you decide to press ahead and do that without me, I am no less of a man if I tell you, you know what, I told you I didn't want to get involved and you ignored me. And now you're going to go ahead and have a baby even though I told you from the beginning I had no interest. Now, if a guy lies, doesn't use a condom and says, I love you, baby, come on here, let me give it to you. And then you give it to her and then she gets pregnant. That's different. But uh, when I meet a woman, in the interest of full disclosure, I tell them. No, I don't have children. That is by design. No, I don't want to have children. And that's that. I say it. I just say it. 
So for me, it would not be manning up to go against everything I already said, to go against uh, my beliefs, my principles, my wishes. That would not be manning up. That would be turning into a pussy. The character in the movie was a stoner who was not employed, who had almost no money. He liked to hang out with his friends all day long and work on these uh, internet projects that never went anywhere. That's, that's what he did. It is not manning up to give up your friends and give up whether it is your bong or your career or whatever uh, to say, you know what, I'll be by your side. That's not manning up. That is not manning up. I say that man, wait, look, if you want to have a baby, guys, go do whatever makes you uh, happy. Whatever floats your boat. You may find out later that it's a lot harder than you thought. You'll certainly find out it's a lot more expensive than you thought. You'll find out a lot of things the hard way. A lot of things. But if that's what you want to do, go ahead and do it. But saying you'll be there doesn't make you any more of a man. I would not be there. I'm telling you right now, if a woman told me I'm pregnant, I'm having your baby, I guarantee you I would not be there. Would not be there. Have no interest in being there. Have no interest in participating. Have no interest in having responsibilities. And that does not make somebody more grown up. That's another thing that was referred to on the show. Uh, the, the idea that uh, the more responsibilities you take on, the more grown up you are. I don't agree. Taking on responsibilities doesn't make you grown up. The fact is that... Uh, I think keeping your life as simple as possible is mature. I try to streamline and simplify everything in my life so I have a minimum of labor, a minimum of responsibilities, a minimum of commitments. Nothing uh, nothing immature about that. I don't see why people try to turn that around and say that the more responsibility you have, the more grown up you are. It doesn't make any sense. So, uh, do you agree with the caller on the show who said that, uh, you know, when the main character in this movie knocked up, found out that the woman he had the one night stand with was going to have a baby, he said he'd be there for her. The caller said, well, I, I, it's great the way he manned up. Do you agree with that? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Tom, I want you. Really? Oh, did anyone ever tell you you're beautiful? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're lying to me. Oh, baby, that hurts. The Tom Likey Show. The Tom Likey Show. At one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. this uh, phrase to man up if a woman tells you she's pregnant and she's going to have the baby and you don't want to have a baby is that what manning up is all about saying oh yeah yeah I'll, I'll be there for you I'll help you I disagree Kevin on the Tom like his show hello Tom how are you great Tom I think I love you and I hate you at the same time I don't know how to feel about you buddy I see. I love listening to your show, though. I love it. Keep it up. I think I agree with you to the extent where if the guy says offhand, hey, you know, I don't want to have kids just so you know, and then the woman gets pregnant, it is only his responsibility to say, I will take care of this in the sense, like you said, if you want to pay for this, I'll pay for that. That's fine, and then I'm done, you know? But... Because, you know, I mean, like I said, he said up front, I didn't want this, and it happened. And it's his responsibility. He could walk away, too, if he wants. But in the, in the movie, he did not wear a condom, and that was his choice to not do that. He didn't wear a condom because he thought that she was telling him not to. But, Tom... But it, was due to a miscommuni- it was due to a miscommunication. This, this is true, Tom. But I know, I know that you... And, you know, what funny thing about you, Tom, is that you're ten times more intelligent than anyone that calls into your show. And that's including me. Don't, don't downgrade yourself that way. <laughs> but... 
the thing is, is that it's always, always, no matter the miscommunication, you're right. She did say, go ahead and do it. But as a responsible person, as an intelligent person, you say, no, I'm still going to do this because I know what. I don't see how that makes you a more responsible person. You have to, Tom, you have to agree with me on that. You no, I don't have to agree with you on that. And, 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 it, and by the way, I ask you why, and, and your only response is, well, you have to agree. No, no, you have to tell me why. Because, Tom, as, as, as you said, even though she told you not to, I mean, let's talk about, I mean, and this might be blowing out of proportion and taking it to another level, but let's talk about holding it up. And like I said, and I agree that this might be a little bit overdone, but in a court of law, uh, she told me I didn't have to wear a condom. It was please. You still had the choice. The choice is still yours whether or not to do There's it. There's no court of law involved. You are not, first of all, sex is legal. Uh, secondly, nothing illegal if you impregnate somebody. What does the court of law have to do with this? No, but that's, that's what I'm saying. As far as, like, I mean, what you said, as far as it, it, in the stats, it's still, it was his choice to not wear the condom. And the results of his decision is what... So happened. then, so he, then he, I guess he has to pay. But guess what? He didn't have any money. That's true. No, but and see, that's what I'm saying. So I agree with you. I'm not saying that he has to stand there. I'm not saying that he has to marry her. I'm not at all. But he still has to take the responsibility. Now, beforehand, if he said... What does that... Know, wait, wait, stop. What does that mean, take responsibility? It, he was responsible. He was, let's say, 50% responsible for what happened because it was a 50-50 situation. So what? So, like you said, and I agree with you there. He had 0% choice of what would happen in the event of a pregnancy. No, no, not 0% choice of what would happen. Yes, zero, say. zero. No, because he could say, like you said, he could say, I'll pay for an abortion, let's say. No, but, but she could say no, and uh, guess what? Guess whose and, opinion but then, it... See, but if, to me, if he said that beforehand... Before they even had sex, before they, you know, when they first met each other? Well, in that case, if you saw the movie, they were drunk. They were drunk. So, I mean, so according to you, he has no responsibility for what happened then? Well, the responsibility he has is a financial one. Exactly. Well, no, and, then, and like I said, I, I agree with you totally there. Then, not, then we're on the same page now. Right, buddy, but, but that's, I mean, that's the law, but guess what? You can't get blood from a stone. The guy had no money. And that's true. And like, okay, maybe then maybe we came off, uh, maybe I came off wrong, because then I agree with you. Like I said, as long as he... I never mind. We just wasted how much time? Another misunderstanding. Kimberly on the Tom Likas show, hello. Tom, I'm a listener for over 10 years now. You're making me feel old. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, baby. Listen, I so concur with you. I've not seen a film, but I'm so glad I didn't because it sounds like a very glamorized fantasy land, a happy ending that is so far-fetched. I grew up um, in the 70s with my mother being a single parent, and uh, she never went to my father uh, raising the child support. She struggled, and it totally shaped my decision of not wanting to have children. I love children. I'm an aunt of seven kids from one sister, and I see the you know, totally different lifestyle. And uh, one movie you do need to see is Mr. Brooks, That Rock. Uh, who's in that one? I've seen the ads for it. Kevin Costner and William Hurt and Dane Cook, and they carry the film. It rocked. Oh, my God. Well, it's, so, not a, it's not a chick flick? Uh, no, it's not. But uh, neither is uh, knocked up as far as I'm concerned. For this woman, it's not a chick flick. Oh. But uh, I, I totally support your angle. Uh, people need to be adults about this. Make, make your stance. And I think it's ridiculous that women do trick a lot of men into having whether they want to admit it or not. Yep, you're right about that. Kovan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. This is Kovan. I was still waiting. <laughs> oh, hold on. Let me see if I can get Tom for you. <laughs> the Tom Likas show. At one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, that's our telephone number. Come on, hello. Hello. Yes. Is this Tom? Did you hello. want to talk to Tom? Oh, I should. You're pimping, pimp. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it pimping. I thought I just wanted to make sure I had the right man on the line. Yes, you do. Okay, so Tom, in real time, never saw the movie, but I got a script that's equally as intriguing. <laughs> I met a girl recently. Started dating her. Like, maybe a month ago. Hadn't known each other very long. <laughs> Originally, she said, you know, um, I'm just very sexual, don't, not interested in having kids, this and that. Well, I made my own mistake, and as a result, she comes back with a whole different campaign. <laughs> now she's like, okay, 
I'm pregnant and I want to have the child. And basically decided that that's what she was going to do. And I was just basically became a sperm donor. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I mean, I was like, you know, okay. I tried to, you know, bring in some kind of clarity to it. I'm like, okay, we've only been dating for this long and it's purely sexual. You know, and it's only been a couple times we hooked up. So you're pregnant now and you have, you've known me less than a month and you want to have a child. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. Mouth open, had, you know. Yeah, so uh, what'd you do? Well, I mean, at that point, I was like, okay, um, my input is, look, I'll support you whenever your decision is, but how are we going to raise a child? You don't know me, and you, you know, we've just been having sex. That's going to make us parents, and, you know, we have no, there's no continuity, no chemistry in that half, especially when it comes to emotion. So I'm kind of flabbergasted because she wants to have a child. To go on, in detail, I find out as I'm doing my investigation, and I started asking her, okay, well, you know, because she has a child, too. <laughs> on top of it, little twist. Already had a child. I go and ask her, I'm like, so, have you, what's the longest relationship involvement you've ever had? <laughs> oh, my relationships don't go past no more than six months. <laughs> so I'm like, wow. In my mind, I'm like, damn, I ran into a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, just, I mean, come on. I mean, it's, and, and that's just, you know, I'm putting this out there. Someone who's, and she's 30, and through all her years of dating and her experience, had never had a relationship longer than six months. Red flag? <laughs> of course. I, you, know, too, you know, for me, it was way too late. So mind you, okay, gets better. She's like, okay, I want to have the baby. You know, I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay, all right, wow. You know, I'd been involved with someone else for, you know, this was, you know, there's a lot of details involved. And now here I am facing someone who wants to have my child. On top of it, she goes, and like, well, I told, you know, my friends, my family, and everything. I'm like, hold on. So not only have we known each other less than a month, but you've gone and told pretty much your whole entire family that you're pregnant? And I'm like, well, what did they think about this? Oh, God. <laughs> and she's like, oh, well, they're used to me. This is, you know. I'm like, wow. Unbelievable. So, yeah. So, th Tom, bring some clarity. I haven't seen the movie. I'm living it. Well, I'm just telling you, that, you know, my attitude about these things when they have the baby or they're going to have the baby, if the Hail Mary doesn't work. Oh, wait, let's, let's wait. You can't. And like the last caller, see, completely oblivious to a woman's agenda. Yeah, I mean, I want no part of this. I can't have a part of it. This, let's, let's wait. You're, you're, you're smart. Won't be baited. You know, the full disclosure, like you said, is the you know appropriate and ultimate. You know, that's it. And the reason it works so well, and it's the perfect crime, <laughs> is because I know in my heart of hearts that women will still have sex with me because they think they can change me. Exactly. It's an agenda. So it, guys are afraid to tell the truth that they don't want to have a baby, when in reality, it's perfectly safe to say that because the vast majority of women will think, oh, yeah, uh-huh. Exactly. They, it's not going to change their view. That's they right. Think, they think they're all sunshine, and it's all golden. Then yeah. later on, if they get knocked up, you say, hey, I told you. Yeah, it, it, man. So, okay, so check this out. So, she, you know, in the process, we're discussing this, and I'm like, you know what, I'm really not cool with this, but... You know, I'm willing to work with you and live up to my obligations and accountability. You know, I will be accountable for what, you know, I lacked in sense, <laughs> you know. But I'm like you. I'm not going to be at the Lamaze, not trying to go be in the birth room, not trying to meet nobody. I'll meet your mama because that's appropriate. Anybody else outside of that, mm, I'm not really feeling you. So she's like, okay. And then it becomes an issue. And then later on down the road is we just, you know, you know like women, we just not going to agree. Out of the blue, she's like, you're a bitch. She said that to you? Oh, outright. You're a bitch. You know how I handled that? Deleted the contact from my phone, and I'm like, I'm out. Perfect. You know, that's it. Done. Yeah, worst that happens. That's, you know. She comes after you for child support, and you'll have to pay up. Oh, yeah. No, at this point, like, I'm, no, I'm putting pressure on the game. I'm going to put pressure on the game. Let's go do DNA. I've only known you less than a month, <laughs> and you and I already know. And for you. Good for you. I'm proud of you. Oh, That's wait, great. And prior to her meeting me, she'd already full disclosure on her behalf. Oh, I was having sex with this other cat, you know, a few months before I met you. 
So now, okay, cool. I got enough information. Let's go do DNA. I'm not tripping. You know, it's 50-50 for me. I got nothing to lose. Uh, you know, I'd, by the way, legally speaking, I'm not a lawyer, so you might want to run this past a lawyer, but my understanding of the law, and I'm a layman, is that uh, what you might want to do is force the issue and demand a DNA test because in most states you get like a year or two to prove you're not the father. Oh, wow. And then if she puts you down as the father, it doesn't matter oh. whether you are or aren't. So you might not want to just forget about her. You might want to have an attorney contact uh, her uh, people. Do you know what? That's good. That's good. Solid advice. I, yeah. Because, yeah. I, you know, I, and, and the horrible thing is, I'm, you know, I'm concerned about the welfare of the child. Because it's not the child that I don't want. I don't want her. Uh-huh. It's her. I ain't, got, I ain't trying to see her. That's right. That's it. But the welfare of what, you know, being adults and being accountable, you know, I'm willing to take my responsibility for. Yeah. You, you can have a court-ordered DNA test. Wow. And then, then you can rest easy the rest of your life. Wow. You know what, Tom? If, if, if I get with your peoples, can we, you know, address that and come back later on and have a result? Of course. <laughs> I'm, I'm completely for it. Good for you. So I appreciate your time. I'm just trying to put out there, fellas, mm, agenda. Watch it. Good points, Coban. I'm proud of you. Thanks for the call. That's great. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Megan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Great. I, it's not really a big deal. I've just been listening for about five minutes. But I heard you on your last call. You said basically in the movie um, they wouldn't have been able to get any child support out of him anyways because he didn't have any money. Doesn't have any money. And right. you can't get blood from a stone. He he might be uh, told he has to pay a certain minimum amount, like a certain bottom line he has to pay. But uh, And they might say, well, you better go out and get a job, son. But the reality is that's pretty hard to enforce, and they rarely do. No, I've actually been in that exact same situation. And it wasn't a whole lot that he was ordered to pay $500 a month. And when he didn't, they actually got warrants for his arrest and everything else. And we're going to put him in jail if he didn't get a job and find the means of paying that. Well, that's oh. wonderful. Did he I want? Just did he to point out your did, inaccuracy in that? Well, dear, again, uh, we're, we're not so sure that that's uh, the uh, the uh, the status of courts across the country. That happens to be a judge who you dealt with. It uh, is in Arizona. Well, and generally speaking, president. generally speaking, that's look, president. ask most women about whether or not they're getting child support. So many of them say they're not getting any. Uh, these laws are not enforced that way. Well, I, so I you got lucky, Arizona. sweetheart. You got lucky. Yep, I did. And, and by the way, friend. by the way, is this because you need the money or just because you want to get a pound of flesh out of him? Uh, no, I needed the money. At well, the but, yeah, but guess what? When he's in jail, he can't earn any money. No, it wasn't. But so, so what? Jail, what what, 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 what would job. putting him in jail accomplish? Well, number one, I didn't put him in job. No, no, but jail. but you made the big stink that got him put in jail. It did. No, it didn't put him in jail. He didn't ever go to jail, but he did get a job, and then he did pay child support. Uh, so but, it, it but if he went to jail, what would that have accomplished? It would have taught him that he needs to get his act in order. Well, why is that your business? Why is that, you know, what it should have taught was you not to be having sex with deadbeats. Well, number one, I didn't know he was a deadbeat. Number two, it You did didn't know he was a deadbeat? And number two, you shouldn't be having sex with strangers uh, without a condom. No, he wasn't a stranger, and he did have a job. You just said you didn't know him. I never said that. Is he a loser? Yes, now he is. Wait, what do you mean now he is? Well, he wasn't when we were together. What was he then? Well, he at least had a job. Uh, doing what? <laughs> doing none of your business. No, no, dear. Uh, you're anonymous. You'll tell us what he did for a living. What was his job? I'm not telling you. What do you mean you're not telling me? You're anonymous. You're going to tell me what his job, what was his no, job. You don't have to, I don't need to know where he worked. I don't need to know the name of the company. I need to know what he did for a living. He was a graphic designer. A graphic designer. Mm -hmm. And then what? You're telling me he quit his job so he wouldn't have to pay child support? Yes. You you know that for a fact, or you're just saying? No, I know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I see. Not really a big deal. I was just pointing that and, out. Uh, and did he, he want to? Did, did he want to have a baby? Did well. he want to have a baby with you? No, of course not. Of course I not. Didn't. So why did you let that happen? A um, mistake happened. No, no, dear. It's not a mistake because you didn't use birth control. No, I didn't. And then you wanted to have a baby. No, I was just young and stupid. And wanted to have a baby. 
No, I didn't. What As, once it happens, and I was happy about my pregnancy. Well, if enough. you didn't want to have a baby, you would have had an abortion. I don't believe in murder. Oh, please, but you believe in fornication, which I find fascinating. Tom Likas. Tom Likas. Tom, 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 Tom. I hate uh, smokers in line. Well, you may hate it. I hate lots of things. I hate fat women in tube tops. Should we make a law against them? Heck yeah. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. What is it with women using that term, man up, when it comes to a woman announcing that she's pregnant and you're supposed to, like, step up to the plate? Well, as far as I'm concerned, you do your legal responsibility, whatever will keep you out of trouble, and that's it. If you want to do more than that, that's fine. That's up to you, but uh, me, I have no interest. And you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you? Great. Great. You know, I have no sympathies for these dumbasses who call up, and especially when they say, oh, I've known her less than a month and she's pregnant now what do i do whining to you about it in the first place they shouldn't have had sex unprotected it's responsibility of both part partners if the if you're not sure if the chick's you know covered make sure your ass is what's the big deal keep them in condoms in your truck keep them in your car keep them in your house keep them in your everywhere. well there's, there's no doubt about that but as you know uh, even when you use condoms and i know this because i've done it three times uh condoms slip they leak Sure. They break. Well, uh, then you've tried, at least by buying the condoms. But, but, you, uh, but you still, the point is, even if you, you use condoms, you can get somebody pregnant. Uh, but once you've done that, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't, I don't see why a man has any more responsibility other than to write the check he's legally required to write. Sure. Well, I agree. I agree. And I don't like, I can't stand the chicks that call up and whine to you about, oh, he's a deadbeat dad, he doesn't pay child support, and he should step up. And You know what? I really don't even think they even care about the child support, because even if these men were paying the child support, I think they just want to see the guys again. I, they'll find something else. I think that's why they had the baby in the first place. Oh, my God. God, I just want to smack them. I've got three children, but I did it with, through the marriage. I was married for almost 19 years. I did what I was supposed to do. I am divorced now for eight, nine months. I'm telling you, Tom, I, the friends, his friends have come out of the woodwork. There's no loyalty to the ex, trust me. And uh, I'm having more fun now than when I did being married. Are you nailing, all, being, are you, are you nailing all his friends? I'm sorry, what? Are you nailing all his friends? Um, I'm picking and choosing. That's my option. All the ones you, all the ones you were hot for. I'm sorry, what? All the ones you were always hot for. Um, well, I thought we're cutie pies and just a whole different relationship. But I'm not looking to pick out curtains with anybody. I make that very clear. Uh, come over for a few minutes, whatever. Meet you, whatever. You're gone. It's just that simple. Uh, and but I do it responsibly, Tom. My God, you think I'm going to put myself in a position? Uh, you know, I'm on the, the pill. I still insist on condoms. Hey, there's no room for scrooping. God forbid if it does happen, then I've done my part. They've done theirs. Uh, we were responsible. I understand if it happened, but I, I'll deal with it then. But I, I, rather than that happening, I'm going to be responsible in the first place. There we go. And thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Kurt on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's going on? Not much. Pleasure to meet you and talk to you. As well it should be. Yes. Uh, I want to give you my story of manning up. I'm 22 now. Uh, three years ago, I got a chick I was dating pregnant. And uh, I should have told her. I was like, hey, you know, if you're going to keep this baby, I'm out of here. You know, I'll go join the Army. They'll, they'll take care of my kid. You'll never see me again. You know, you'll never hear from me. You'll get that check in the mail. That's it. And, uh, you know, it, it seriously worked. She was completely, 
you know, terrified about never seeing me again. So she really did whatever I wanted. It was awesome. Which tells you why she wanted to have the baby in the first place, was yeah, to lock exactly. you into the relationship. You know, I, mean, I mean, we used protection and stuff like that, but, you know, something slipped up or whatever, and, you know, it happened. And, you know, I mean, now I'm 22 years old, making 60 grand a year. Uh, actually still with her. She finished school. Nothing, you know, so many positives that came from not having a kid. Right. can't even tell you. You know, and a couple of my buddies, one of my buddies had a girl get an abortion twice. And, you know, he's making 80 grand a year. And, you know, we're in our young 20s. You know, so, you know, that's what manning up is. Standing by your guns. Not none of this, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the puss and... uh you know, I'll be I'll be helping says. you breathe. Yeah. I'll be helping you breathe at the Lomas class, honey. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, it's not manning up. Me and the missus now are breathing all the way to the bank. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a pleasure talking to you, Tom. Can you take me out, Crocodile Hunter style? Crocodile Hunter style. We haven't yeah. had a request for that in a while. All right, here you go. One bite from him, and it's all over. <laughs> Oh, crack. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Crystal, hello. Hi, Tom. Um, I was just calling because I, I went and I saw the movie this weekend, and I thought it was hilarious. But I also think the guys who are calling in and saying, oh, yeah, you know, the girl got me for, I had a kid with her, and I ended up saying, they're idiots. If they're stupid enough to get the girl pregnant, then they deserve what they get. What, what does that mean? Well, if they're stupid enough to get the girl pregnant, you know, uh, using excuses, oh, well, I pulled out, and, you know, then they deserve to get stuck with the girl and have her bitch and complain. Well, you and, don't have to be stuck with the girl. You can just give her the money you're legally required to give and then be done with it. But the guys who are calling are saying, well, I'm stuck. How do I get out of it? Well, I mean, if you're stupid enough to get in it, then stay in it, you know? Uh -uh. They made him... Uh, they messed up. They don't. I mean, I they... know. I think if you messed up, you try the Hail Mary. When that doesn't work, you say, all right, I'll just pay. But remember, you'll never see me or hear from me again. Yeah, but the guys who are calling, they're, they're pushes. They can't. It's like they can't stand up to them. I'm I'm 25 years old. I own my own business. I live on my own. I mean, I have. No worries. I don't have a boyfriend, don't want one, don't want any kids. I have sex when I want to, with who I want to, and I don't try to trap anybody. If guys are dumb enough to fall for it, then they deserve it. <laughs> Thank you for that, Crystal. I hope the boys are listening. I do. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Rick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Rick? There we go. Thank you, Rick. Rich on the Tom Likas Show. Hello? Hello? Okay. Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello? Hello? All right. Uh, let's go to... I'm uh, just going to keep going through calls until I get one who's there. Chris, hello? Hi, sir. How you doing? Great. Uh, long time, first time. It's so hard to get through. Hey, I, I enjoy uh, much of your show, but, you know, I'm a stay-at-home dad. My wife went back to work first of the year, and I've been staying home with the boys, you know, about nine and a half months old. And, yeah, I didn't want the responsibility either when it started, And but we're married. And I said, well, when the baby was coming, she didn't agree in abortion, neither did I. And, yeah, we're stupid for not doing the condom thing, but we're monogamous, so the condom was just for disease sort of thing, we thought. And we didn't want a kid either. And it well, really if you're a monogamous, wait, wait, wait. If you're monogamous, why would you be needing a condom for disease? I mean, it's, you know, that's what I mean. So we, you're saying you weren't using a condom because you were monogamous? The rhythm would work, but I guess the rhythm wasn't right. Uh, anyway, so we, we... By the way, by the way, who uses the rhythm method? Catholics, right? It worked for five years. Yeah, yeah well, guess what? You know, you, you spin the wheel. You ever been to Las Vegas? You spin the wheel. Eventually, you lose. Yeah, I know, I know. But, the, you know, when the kid came, I thought, okay, it's a big inconvenience financially to get a bigger place. And, I mean, I'm a loan officer, so I can work from home if I want to. 
and I do. And first of the year, she went back to work, and I had no idea what I was going to do. And, oh, my God, it's more than just changing diapers. Well, now he's starting to walk, and it's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's a big drag, though, sometimes. But, I mean, it is manning up. I feel great about doing it. I mean, yeah, it's a big inconvenience in my schedule and all that. Are you married? What's that, sir? Are you married? Oh, yeah, we're married. All right. Well, it was not clear. What do, you, what do you mean you're manning up? I mean, you're married. That's like what you agreed to when you get married. She, she works away from home 20 days a month, and the other 10 days she's, you know, sometimes she's working. She's hardly ever home. I'm 24-hour-a-day daycare for the little boy. And you, you are aware, by the way, of the high level of, uh, of uh, indiscretions that happen among women who are away from home that much? Well, I'm aware of the statistics, yeah. Okay. You feel good about that? Well, I don't know what exactly you're talking about, though. Don't you ever wonder? What's that? Don't you ever wonder what's going on when your wife is away all that time? No, other women I would have before, but no, I'm pretty square with this one. She's square with me too. How do you? How do you know? Well, you can never know. You can't have a bird in someone's pocket that tells you everything someone's doing. Well. She I want to be doing something in the, at lunchtime, never mind working away from home. I'd be awfully nervous about uh, my wife, if I were married, being away from home that much. Nah, I'm not worried about it. it. With other women, I probably would have been. But with her, nah. It's much different. It's a better relationship. I wouldn't have married her if I was worried about that kind of stuff. A lot of women I've met, I wouldn't. I would have worried I'm about I'm sure that most of the people who find out their wives are having affairs weren't worried about it until they found out. It's much different than that. It's 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 a, it's a more solid relationship. We were married, we were going out for almost three years before we got married. Doesn't mean a thing. It, well, it may not, but I'm not really worried about that. I'm not worried about the baby either. He looks exactly like me. Exactly, he's wonderful. He does every single little thing about him is just so much like me. Yeah, I, so I, I don't worry about that. You know, um, but anyway, I mean, I enjoyed manning up. I mean, taking care of him. At first, I thought this is a drag, but I wasn't going to put him in a 24-hour daycare and let a stranger raise him. I mean, you know, my dad took care. Of, my dad stayed in a relationship that really wasn't all that fantastic. My mom was a, a you know what, most of the time, and he worked hard and took care of things. And I mean, we wouldn't have turned out to be decent people if dad had just taken off and said, "Screw it." You know, he had to call in, you know, and know how many, what well, the statistics are that, uh, what, better than 50% of the black people in America don't grow up with their own parents in the house because the parents, I mean, look at this show Flavor Flav. He's got six kids. He don't be home and take care of any of them. He don't send anything to them that he doesn't have to. He doesn't fess up to his responsibility for nothing. You know, yeah, I didn't want to have a kid. You're right. Lamar's class, all that, it's a drag. I didn't want to do it, but here we are doing it. So, wait, you didn't want to do it, and she shoved it down your throat. Her work, her work schedule doesn't allow her to be able to do it, and I wasn't going to put him in daycare. And wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. She insisted on having a baby even though you didn't want to. No, I wanted to have it, too. Once it was coming, I said, okay. Once it was know. coming. But the point is, it was not what you wanted to do. And not originally, but I figured I was, you know, close to 40 years old when she got pregnant. And no, you were there. Well, that's when you started rationalizing your fate, which was already decided for you by someone else. It was decided when, when the baby was conceived. No, was, uh, it was decided. Well, no, because believe me, there's other things that could be done, as right, you know. But, when the, but we both agreed to have the baby, and we knew it was going to be a sacrifice. Well, you both agreed after she agreed and then made you go along with it. No, no, no. I, I love kids. I have another boy not, about uh, almost nine years old up north of here, and I go see him on weekends whenever I can, and... It's, it's the kids. Kids are great. So you've all you, you know, you've already abandoned. You've already wait 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 wait. You just talked about your father and when, well when he abandoned the. You already abandoned one kid. Well, I've got two. No, you, but one, you I'm, one I'm a full time dad. One I'm a full time stay at home. And the dad. other one lives four hundred miles away. What's that, sir? And the other one lives four hundred miles away. About two hundred miles away. That's a f <laughs> where, where, where okay, weekends. I get to take care for my boy, and I go up and spend other t time with my other son on weekends. Just came back, took him to Legoland and Calabasas last weekend. Had a great time. It's wonderful. I mean, at my all the, all this commuting to be a dad to two different kids in two different cities. Uh, uh, I, if you're happy, great. Me, I would not be happy. I would just uh, cut the check and be done with it. But that's me. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. 
And if you'd like to hear our show streaming live, anytime you want to hear it live between 3 and 8 p.m. Pacific time, just go to blowmeuptom.com and click on the Listen Live button. It's blowmeuptom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.